Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alicia from Alicia Be Creative and today is another Tumblr tutorial and I'm going to show you how I created sort of this fall themed like wood green, very rustic style Tumblr. I was inspired to create this by a pattern vinyl that I received from Lindsay over at Vinyl Gallery. She sent me some absolutely gorgeous prints that I knew I could put to great use. And so I'm gonna show you exactly how I put together this tumbler and show you how you can do a V split style mug just like this using vinyl on a mug that has a handle. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to share some tips and tricks to help you be able to recreate this exact design. So of course, everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. Of course, check that description box out for discount codes as well as links to all of my social media. Additionally, don't forget, I have a Facebook group over on Facebook called Leisha Be Creative Community. I encourage you to join. I do live tutorials every single week and it's always a lot of fun. So if you're interested in learning more about creating tumblers, learning about business, or just hanging out and chatting while crafting, it's definitely a great group to join. And that is also linked down in the description box. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be use a 12 ounce morning mug from the Steel Magnolia Company. I also have this pattern vinyl floral that I got from a vinyl gallery. And I have these paints that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and we're gonna be using some alcohol inks as well. So these are all the products that I'm gonna use and of course everything I use will be listed and linked down in the description box. So let's go ahead and get our cup prepped. So I'm just gonna take a sanding block and just give my cup a nice sand, just kind of scuff up the surface and kind of remove that gloss and shine from the stainless steel. I'm then gonna take a paper towel and a little bit of 91% rubbing alcohol and get this all cleaned off so that we can get this cup prepped. Now that my cup is clean, I did take it outside and spray paint it with a flat white spray paint to get this kind of base painted for what we're going to be doing with this. So I'm going to create a template for my V split so that I can just cut this, this out of the vinyl that I'm going to be using. So I've taken a piece of scrapbook paper out of the scrapbook books that I usually use to help me catch glitter. And I've just put the edge or the corner of the paper on the mug to kind of measure how far I want the V portion of the V split to go, if you will. And then I've just kind of taken my scissors and cut on either side of that top piece to give myself a little bit of a template. So normally you guys know that I just would fold my vinyl in half and just use one triangle of that vinyl to be able to apply to a cup but because the wood floral that we're using has the vertical planks I want to remain keeping those planks vertical so using the corner would not give me the vertical plank look so I have to do this a little bit differently so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my now this piece of cardstock that I have that is my template which I can use for projects later and in the future I'm going to use this to be able to cut the exact piece that I'm going to need for my mug so I'm just going to cut off all the excess on the edge of the vinyl just any of the white edges just to make sure I get a nice even piece of the vinyl so that I can apply this to the cup I'm then going to take my stencil or my um, example here and I'm going to place it on the bottom portion of the vinyl and then I'm just going to kind of mark with scissors or cut kind of the edge with scissors um, and I'm going to use that to then cut straight across. That way I then can cut the piece that I need for the vinyl. So taking that back to my paper cutter, cutting right above where that notch I made with my craft knife is and then I'll take this piece here and I will put my stencil back on top of that and just cut along the edges of where my stencil where the edges of my cardstock paper that I'm using fits and this is going to give me the perfect shape that I need to be able to apply to my tumbler so I did cut this with a little bit of excess on the top to make sure that I had a little bit of wiggle room for errors of course but cutting and using a template is a great way to be able to create your V splits and not have to struggle or worry about getting it applied or fear that you're going to waste a whole sheet of vinyl I love using them or making them out of just cardstock. I have plenty of different like stencils that I'll use um, or example pieces, if you will, for like fabric cups on a 20 ounce, 30 ounce. You also can do this to help you size and decide how big or large you want your decals to be. So really 
making your own kind of stencils and guides are a great way to make sure you get the perfect fit every single time. So I'm going to now get this applied to the cup. So I've placed this on my tumbler the way that I want it to fit and I'm just going to tape down a couple of sides so I can work with one edge of the vinyl at a time. So I'm going to peel back one edge cut off the backing and then I will begin to smooth this edge all the way around the cup so that is completely adhered. Putting the tape there is going to help me keep that piece stationary so that my vinyl ends up being extremely straight on the cup and I don't have to worry about it ending up being crooked or lopsided and the vinyl not meeting in the perfect shape on the back end. Once I'm done with that, I'm just going to remove the tape, remove that second piece of backing, and now we're going to work on our vinyl edge here. So the way that I like to do the edge around a handle, which can be a little bit difficult, is I just cut around the handle. So very carefully cutting right at the base of the handled edge there and cutting through so that I have a straight edge right under the handle. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the top portion. So cutting right along the edge so that I can apply that top piece right along the top edge of the mug. And then there's usually like a little bit of a gap, if you will, right under the handle where that doesn't meet. So sometimes I'll just take the excess that I have from on top of the handle and just place a small piece there. Again, this is not going to be super important because again remember we'll be going in with a vinyl strip there so I won't really have to worry about it not matching how the rest of the vinyl fits because this is a really really small piece um, of vinyl that I'm having to sort of replace or surgically replace in that section on the other side of the handle. So that is all finished and now I'm going to continue doing what I normally would do in a v-split. I'm going to kind of pull the remainder of the top edge or excess over the top and then I'll just use my craft knife to be able to cut off the little bit of excess that I have up top. That way I have a nice straight and clean edge to be able to work with. With the top edge all cleaned up, now I'll just spend time making sure that I don't have any air bubbles under my vinyl and just cutting small slits in those to kind of get that air removed. And now that I think that looks pretty good, I'm going to go back to my painter's tape and I'm going to grab my painter's tape and cover up this vinyl. So I'm just going to take two pieces of painter's tape here and very carefully cover up my vinyl so that we can begin to do the wood grain portion of the tumbler here. So I'm only going to cover up the edges. I'm not going to cover up sort of the entire piece of vinyl. Um, I don't think that I'll make too much of a mess. I don't believe um, on top of the vinyl since we'll be using alcohol inks and just a dry chip brush to be able to get that wood grain look. So now that that is all sort of taped up very carefully around that handled area and along the edge of the vinyl, I then can go in to the next step in the process. So now to get our wood grain look. So I have two alcohol inks that I'm using here. They are both Ranger alcohol inks. I have a butterscotch and sepia, and I have a dry chip brush that I literally just picked up from the Dollar Tree. And so we're gonna do this wood grain look. So I've done wood grain on my channel before, but it's really super simple and easy. You apply just a strip of alcohol ink on top of your tumbler, and then you brush with your dry chip brush in an upward or downward motion. Try not to make circles or anything crazy because that will show through on your wood grain and to go for the truest wood grain look doing those up and down motions are really going to give you the best look to kind of mimic the look of a piece of wood so I'm going to go through and use butterscotch butterscotch excuse me as my base color and then I'll go over the entire cup again with another darker color I like mixing like my brown alcohol inks when I'm doing wood grains because I feel like it gives it a richer texture and look. Um, but I know a lot of tumbler makers or creators stick to like one color that they especially like and that's kind of like their go-to wood grain. Um, so kind of figure out what works best for you or which colors you like. There's so many different versions of brown alcohol ink that you really can get a lot of different wood grain looks. Um, so it kind of depends on what you are going for, going for as far as sort of the darkness or the lightness of the wood that you're going for. So now that I've gotten kind of a butterscotch applied, you'll see that I have this kind of blonde wood texture, which is not what I want. I want it to be much darker, which is why we're going to go in with the second color of alcohol ink, which is sepia. 
So sepia is a much richer color, kind of more red tones in sepia than in butterscotch or the other browns that I typically would gravitate towards. But I love how it blends really nicely and well on top of butterscotch. Without having the butterscotch alcohol ink underneath, sepia tends to look more red, which is not what I wanted. I wanted to make sure it stayed a true brown, and because sepia has those reddish undertones, I like to pair it with a second alcohol ink to kind of give it more of the brown textured look and not bring out some of those other colors I'm not looking for in this cup. So I'm going to go over top of butterscotch, just continue doing those up and down motions with my dry chip brush with um, the color sepia from Ranger. And then obviously I will, of course, go and finish off the bottom and the handle as well to make sure I have a nice even coat. So with alcohol inks and creating wood grains, you can go over this as many times as you want. Something to keep in mind is that when you apply alcohol ink on top of alcohol ink, it does remove a little bit of the alcohol ink underneath, if that makes sense. So just be mindful, but doing that... Um, application of alcohol ink on top of alcohol ink is how you're going to get some of those knots not not looks you know like the knots in natural wood that's how you obtain or get those on your cup so that's also something to think about if you want to make sure that your wood has kind of those true natural wood looking knots you're going to want to go over small sections over and over with your alcohol ink and it's going to give that texture and that appearance that it is a natural knot in the wood texture um, so I'm just going to go for a base layer I'm not going for too much sort of knot look um, or you know wood grain texture because we're going to go over top of this with a couple other colors so you won't really be able to see any of that sort of texture underneath this I want to make sure it's just a very nice even natural wood grain texture and look so I'm finished with my wood grain application I'm gonna let this dry for overnight I don't ever seal my wood grains I just don't have ever found the need so I'm going to let this go overnight and then apply a coat of epoxy so after my coat of epoxy, we are going to get into getting this painted with a couple of paints that I've grabbed from Hobby Lobby. So now that um, the epoxy obviously is cured, I'm going to go back over and we're going to just cover up the edges of the vinyl again, just to make sure I don't get any paint on top of the vinyl that I don't want there. We're really only going to apply our paints and the foils to the wood grain section of the cup and we're going to kind of leave that pattern vinyl as kind of the statement piece of the tumbler. So just going to finish applying that right there and then of course we will get into applying these different paints. So I have two paints here that I'm going to be using. I purchased them both from Hobby Lobby in the paint section. The kind of tealish turquoise color is called Aqua Flash and then of course I have this really beautiful bronze color which I love and it's called Rose Gold. So I'm just going to give these paints a really good shake because I want to make sure that they're nicely mixed before I go to apply them to the cup and I have a new dry chip brush that I grabbed out of my craft supplies and we're going to use this to apply them. So I kind of want it to be more of a like not a perfect brush stroke so I really want to be able to see like the paint lines in the chip brush which is why I'm using a dry chip brush and kind of like a wide one so I can begin to kind of see a lot of that texture so I'm going in with aqua flash first which really is a really pretty teal turquoise color but shows up really blue on top of the dark wood grain and I'm just taking the edge of my dry paintbrush and I'm just kind of doing random brush strokes in different areas. So I'm kind of just creating like a base and making sure I have room for the other colors that I'm going to be adding here. Don't forget your handle. Make sure you apply a little bit of paint to there as well so it looks like it's part of the design and not sort of an afterthought. So I'm going to finish kind of going through with my paint. Don't forget your bottom as well. Making sure you get enough paint everywhere that you feel like you need. Again, you can always go back and add more paint. So sometimes I start off a little bit kind of subtly with a couple brush strokes of the first color then go in with my next colors before I will um, go back and maybe apply more. So I am going to dry this just a little bit. I just don't want my colors to mix when I go to add the next color. 
I'm going to end up using the same exact paintbrush, just kind of the other edge or the other side of it. Um, but if you have multiple, that's fine. I just wanted to dry this a little bit because I didn't want when I applied the rose gold kind of bronzy color, I didn't want the turquoise or the teal and the, the bronze color to mix together and create like a weird looking color. So just drying this for a few seconds here and then we're going to go in again and apply the rose gold color. So same technique. Just take the little bit of paint on the edge of your dry chip brush and again just do those like upward or downward strokes to kind of give the the color a little bit of a brushed look on top of the cup so going in and filling kind of any empty spaces so because I'm only using two paints you definitely may want to go back and forth between your two colors um, to kind of fill in any gaps we are going to add a little bit of some gold foil to this as well but I wanted to make sure I had established a pretty decent looking base before I go in with anything additional so I feel pretty satisfied with that I may go in and apply a little bit more whatever you feel looks best for you um, kind of do as many brush strokes or as few brush strokes as you feel like you want to for this kind of style and design so I'm gonna kind of let this dry for a little bit and then we will go right into applying our gold foil okay so now we're gonna go in and apply some gold foil so I have some gold foil sheets that I purchased from Amazon and I'm starting with a Gorilla Glue stick thinking that that would be the best method I didn't really like the way that the Gorilla Glue really adhered the um, gold foil sheets so I end up switching gears and switching to using Tacket so I didn't like that a lot of it would come off and it wasn't giving me the brush stroke to look that I was really going for so I decided to switch gears and I end up grabbing Tacket I'm just using a little bit of Tacket in a medicine cup and applying that to the cup versus using a um, using the glue or um, glue stick that I had been using. So I'm going to apply using my dry chip brush again, a new one, and I'm just going to apply different brush strokes throughout the cup making sure to kind of randomly place small sections of that all over the cup. Um, to speed up the process, I of course am going to dry this a bit to get the glue to be in its tackiest phase before I apply the gold foil sheets. So now that that's dry, I can take my pieces of gold foil and I'm just going to place them directly over those sections that are now very tacky. So this is where things get a little bit messy. I'm just going to kind of pick and pick up different pieces and apply them to all of those tacky pieces of the cup that are now obviously sticky due to the jacket. So just kind of peeling off the pieces that are excess and applying them to other sections of the cup that need the gold foil. Um, and then once I've gotten all those sections covered with the gold foil, I'm just going to take a clean dry brush and I'm just going to very aggressively brush over all of this gold foil to release and remove all of the excess foil that is not actually sticking to the cup. So just kind of aggressively brush that out and what this is leaving for me is giving me the exact texture I was looking for. So I wanted the gold foil to look like it belongs on the cup so to speak so making sure that I was getting kind of those same brush stroke lines that I have in the paint underneath making sure that I was getting that in the gold foil that I'm applying as well so just aggressively brush that off to your liking making sure you don't have any extra pieces of the gold just kind of stuck there that aren't really adhered to the cup and then I decided that I was I had a little bit more foil than I really wanted if you will so I'm actually going to go back in and I'm going to apply some more of the paint from the original design. So over the wood grain, I'm going to go back and apply that sort of aqua flash and that rose gold bronze because this section that you're seeing me apply gold to right now was a much larger section than I had intended. So now it was starting to look like the gold was overtaking the cup, which wasn't really what I was going for. I didn't really care for how that looked. So I'm going to clean up this mess and then we're going to go back and apply the aqua flash and the rose gold kind of over that section and in some of the other sections that are just wood grain to really sort of balance out the gold the bronze color and the teal um, to give it a more even look throughout this wood grained section so just play with the paints you know however you want to place them I think that 
mix finding the colors is probably the hardest part so finding colors that work well together is the hardest part but i absolutely love the look of brush stroke cups and to put this on top of a wood green is even better i just love kind of this like rustic almost patina style look that this really gives it's just a super unique style and just something you don't see all the time which is why i think i love it so much so i'm going to get that cleaned up i will let this dry completely and then remove the tape and i'll apply another coat of epoxy over top of this cup once everything is dry so i do another 20 ml of epoxy over top of this cup before we can go in to sanding so the 20 ml is now cured and of course I'm going to start by making sure that I've gotten a nice clean rim of stainless steel. I did also add to this coat of epoxy a little bit of Carp DM from Peachy Olive. It's like a, a blue to green shift chunkier glitter so you'll see in the final clips kind of this super like glittery section and I apply just a little bit of that to that to just kind of bring out more of the green undertones just because the aqua was really more blue than it was green that I wanted so I thought adding a little bit of that kind of sparkle in there would really kind of help bring out more of those green tones so I'm then just going to go in with a brown sort of bronze washi tape that I have to cover up the separation of the wood grain and the vinyl and then I'll put a little bit of polycrylic on this to make sure that my washi tape doesn't do any sort of lifting during the final coats of epoxy. I'll let that dry for about 30 minutes before I go into final coats of epoxy. So it was another 20 ml of epoxy to finish this cup up and here's the final look. So of course, I hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, of course, give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, feel free to follow me on all of my other social media platforms and leave me a comment down below with any questions. So I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.